tobacco addiction, it's a very, very strong addiction. I think that if it continues as, as we're doing now, that uh, the future of our children is not going to be a very bright one. My name is Herbert Sam, and I'm a Mille Lacs band member. And I also work with the band as a spiritual and healer. The plants that that uh, tobacco is made out of is also could be looked at as a good plant if used in a right way. Uh, it's also a plant that can be bad if you use it in a wrong way. At one time, our Native American people uh, were given tobacco by the early Europeans. And uh, what they wanted to do was they wanted to do a good gesture in giving this tobacco to Indian people uh, just as a good gesture. But as the years went by, Native American people got addicted to tobacco. And what they did was that they uh, continued to use this and they forgot about the, the traditions that was given to us as Indian people. And uh, they went out to using uh, this uh, regular tobacco that we can get in stores. When the Europeans came, they found that the ground where they were allowed to live at grew a, an extremely good crop of uh, tobacco. And that was what they, they uh, made their living as, was growing it and taking it back and shipping it back to Europe. And as time went on, uh, there was more, more demand for that tobacco. So what they did was they uh, 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 kind of removed our Indian people to, to make more land so they could grow this tobacco. Over time, since commercial tobacco has been introduced, it has increasingly been um, modified and adapted to increase addiction. And uh, with that the increased toxins, the problem has grown and grown and grown. We're more addicted, but um, I say since to commercial tobacco first reached the reservations, it's been a problem since that point in time. That would probably vary. It is known that the Great Plains area, we have a higher rate of tobacco use than say the um, southern United States. It's probably been a problem in my perspective since it was introduced and we've started using it in our ceremonies. Smoking is a learned behavior and that learned behavior comes from our grandpa, our grandma, our mother, our father, our uncle, our aunts, our brothers, our sisters, our relatives, uh, even our siblings. And those are the ones that teach us uh, as how we use tobacco. We want to uh, teach our young people more, uh, more about education about how to use tobacco than using it in an abusive way. In the state of Minnesota, we, there's a Freedom to Breathe Act and the, indoor, the Clean Indoor Air Act. That does not apply on the reservation. If you step foot off of the reservation, you follow the laws that will help protect you and your family from dangers of secondhand smoke. You come onto the reservation, those laws don't apply. It's up to us as a sovereign nation to make good decisions and policies that protect the health of our people. As a healer myself, I, I work with a lot of children that do have asthma. And what it does, it comes from the three stages of how that's used. Uh, the first stage that they usually have is just the tobacco itself with the nicotine uh, playing the part and going into the person and it's finding like it's an addiction also it ruins your respiratory problem. Uh, and the second is what they call the second hand smoke. The second hand smoke is a is, is, a, is when um, uh, people smoke and uh, other people that don't smoke or are there that are smokers also breathe this in. You find people that are uh, fairly knowledgeable about smoking, secondhand smoke, but when you get into thirdhand smoke, um, then you kind of lose them. They go, what? 
you know, and you, then you talk about the dangers of the, the third hand smoke on the carpeting, even for their pets. Some people will say, well, I don't have children at home, not a big deal. Well, do you have a pet at home? You know, the third hand smoke or second hand smoke. Um, do your grandchildren come visit, crawl around your carpeting, sit on your sofa, third hand smoke. People um, don't have that knowledge. I've chosen not to use tobacco because it's unhealthy. Um, um, both my parents and my whole family has smoked and some of them are suffering the con consequences of smoking. My hope for the future is that we can have like cleaner environment with not smoking around babies, elders and all that and secondhand smoke is really deadly. Smoking at band ceremonies is definitely a problem. Um, in that it exposes people to dangers of secondhand smoke. Uh, tobacco at ceremony is um, appropriate and it is part of our ceremony. If the um, tobacco that is smoked is a commercial tobacco, then the exposure is very high um, and the risks are great. And it is very, very common at our, at our ceremonies that we pass out cigarettes. I know people that um, smoke only at ceremony just because it's part of our ceremony. It's, it, there's an expectation for tobacco use in, in some shape, manner, or form. And you go to a funeral and they hand out um, <clears throat> either cigarette or tobacco. And then most people that smoke will take a cigarette and then it's just cloudy and full of smoke at a funeral and they could just like, take tobacco and put out in the fire. I myself, since I've developed asthma, um, cannot go to a funeral for the full duration just because of the smoke. I can go in, pay my respects, sit a while, but then I have to leave. I would like Mille Lacs Band members to understand um, that there is an alternative, a safe alternative to commercial tobacco use during ceremony. There is, um, we have the red willow plant to make knick-knick and, and I would like band members to return to knick-knick for tr traditional cultural use. A future goal would be to, that more and more ceremony would be done with knick-knick. That would require the buy-in of our traditional leaders, our drum keepers, to say, you know, yeah, what did we do in the old days, when before the can of Prince Albert or these other commercial tobacco products were available to us? What did we do? You know, how did we use our tobacco in a ceremonial way? So hopefully, over time, people will go back to that. More people are trying to break their addiction to commercial tobacco, and it's a struggle. It's hard for people. With um, the education that um, my program does, um, people are um, recognizing the, the increased dangers to not only themselves but their family members. So they are um, trying. We haven't had um, great successes in large numbers but we have had more people that were successful in breaking their addictions. And I think if we understand that phrase of awareness is our strength, that we can possibly help us overcome the dangers of this uh, first, second, and third hand tobacco abuse. We didn't get to where we're at in a short amount of time. It took a very long time for this addiction to, to take hold as it has. With time and with education, we will hopefully pass many more policies towards a healthier, smoke-free community. Whatever we do in the future for our children, we need to do it only for them. Think of other things to do besides smoking, like hobbies such as like going to powwows, beating, and yeah, it's very expensive, I hear, so spend your money on other things.